this good health that we have, it is a great ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, we have taken this for granted. We think that today I am well. I will remain well for my entire life. But this is not the case. There is no guarantee regarding our good health. Today we might be well, tomorrow we might be sick. Let alone tomorrow, today, now we might be well. By the end of tonight, we might be lying down in the hospital beds. This is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he can do whatever he wants. So what are we supposed to do with our good health? Now that we have good health. Now that we have the faculties to see. Now that we have the faculties to hear, to walk, to talk. We need to use it to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to use it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about this my brothers and elders. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to take away the eyesight. This is only one blessing. If Allah was to take away the eyesight of a person. Which doctor on the face of this earth can bring back the eyesight for that person? If Allah Azza wa Jal was to make a person blind. May Allah protect us all. Which doctor on the face of this earth can bring back the eyesight for that person? Yet, Alhamdulillah, we can all see. But look at the amount of haram things that we are looking at on a daily basis. Have we forgotten the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his infinite mercy, has granted us so many blessings, so many favors, that we can go on counting them and listing them, but we will not be able to finish counting them. Allah azza wa jal himself says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا if you were to start counting the blessings I have given you, you will never be able to finish counting them. Your life will come to an end, but thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not come to an end. This is how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. It is not only the eyesight and the hearing. Rather, we have many blessings such as Iman and Islam. How many of us thanked Allah? Ask yourself this. When was the last time we thank Allah for granting us Iman and Islam. It is because we don't value our Iman. We have forgotten the importance of being granted Iman and Islam. Let me take you back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet's uncle Abu Talib. The one who loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immensely. Abu Talib, his uncle, who was willing to give his life for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Talib who defended the Prophet, Abu Talib who saw the Prophet, Abu Talib that went through difficulty with the Prophet, Abu Talib the one that respected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his deathbed. Abu Talib was told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say the kalima only once and that would have been enough for him. Yet how did Abu Talib pass away? He died upon disbelief. He died as a disbeliever. The point, my brothers and elders, is this is Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that saw the Prophet every single day with his own eyes, that lived with the Prophet, that respected the Prophet, that loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, yet he was not blessed with Iman and Islam. This ni'mah that you and I have today, alhamdulillah, Iman and Islam, Abu Talib did not have this. He was not blessed with this. Yet how many of us, we value our Iman and Islam? How many of us are protecting our Iman and Islam? How many of us know what breaks our Iman? What takes us out of our Iman? How many of us know this? Very few of us. Because we do not value our Iman and Islam. How many of us have thanked Allah that we can humbly say that we are Muslims? We have been born in Muslim family. Our parents are Muslims. Isn't this something we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? We have been blessed with the noble Quran, the greatest book that Allah Azza wa Jal ever sent to humanity. Have we thanked Allah for this? We have been blessed to be a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest prophet, the greatest human being that placed his foot on the face of this earth. We can say humbly that we are the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have we thanked Allah for this? Have we thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this? And the list will go on and on and on. 
Have we thanked Allah that we are able to see? We are able to hear. We are able to walk. We are able to talk. Have we thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the question. Let's ask individually to ourselves. How am I thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let's look at how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thanked Allah. And I mentioned this hadith many times. The Nabi of Allah during Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer, the tahajjud prayer. He used to stand for so long. The Sahaba say that the blessed feet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to become swollen. Due to the long amount of time he's standing in prayer. The companions ask, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why are you standing in prayer for so long? Allah has forgiven your previous sins. Allah has forgiven your future sins. Why are you standing in prayer for so long and going through so much difficulty? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam answered, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Should I not be a thankful slave of Allah? Should I not be a grateful slave of Allah? This is why I am standing in prayer for so long. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is standing in Qiyamul Layl for so long that his blessed foot becomes swollen. And today you and I, his followers, we sleep till our eyes become swollen. Let alone Qiyamul Layl, we don't even wake up for Fajr. How are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We cannot even lift our blankets and come to the masjid for the Fajr prayer. And this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joining Qiyamul Layl, standing in prayer, thanking Allah for the favors. And you and I, we want to sleep. We don't have enough of sleep. Let alone Qiyamul Layl, no Fajr prayer. How are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let's ask this question to ourselves. Today for the rest of the khutbah, I want to remind myself and everyone about some of those favors that Allah has given us. My brothers and elders, did you know that drinking a cup of water by yourself, this is a tremendous blessing of Allah. Just drinking a cup of water by yourself is a great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people, they cannot drink a cup of water themselves. Someone needs to feed them. They cannot walk wherever they want. Someone needs to push them and take them to the places they want to go to. Many people, they cannot relieve themselves. Someone needs to help them. They cannot lift a cup of water and drink the water. Does any one of us here have difficulty drinking a cup of water? I'm sure none of us, alhamdulillah. Isn't this a blessing of Allah? That we can drink water whenever we want. We can have whatever we want. We can eat whatever we want with our own hands. No one needs to feed us. No one needs to push us on a wheelchair. Isn't these great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to thank him for? There are so many people around the dunya. Yes, we might be living in a place where we don't see this. But there are people, thousands if not millions of people who cannot walk. They have legs, but they don't have the power to walk. They have been sitting on a wheelchair for years and years. People need to push them. They cannot walk. No matter how much they want, they cannot walk. Because Allah Azza wa has not given them the ability. Allah Azza wa has not given them the power. Alhamdulillah, we walked it to the masjid. We walk wherever we want. We go wherever we want. These are favors. These are blessings that Allah has granted us. And we need to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. <clears throat> now I want to mention some incidents, some stories, which will make us realize, my brothers and elders, that it is now time that we value the blessings Allah has given us before Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal who might take away these blessings. And I'm going to paraphrase the story that the scholar has written in his book. He says that there was once a man who was driving and while he was driving, he was Muslim, he stopped at the traffic lights. And while he stopped at the traffic lights, the car that was stopped next to him had his four windows open and there was music being blasted loud music being blasted in his car now this person he looks at that person and he sees that he has a long beard he definitely is a muslim and this disturbed him for two reasons number one you're a muslim how can you be listening to loud music like this number two what image are you giving to other people that are looking at you listening to music yourself is something that is wrong but then opening your four windows and allowing others to hear that haram is another sin. So this disturbed this person and it made him frustrated. So he decided that he's going to follow him. And 
wait till he stops so that he can go and advise him and tell him that this is completely wrong. Blasting music and then having the four windows open and then you are a Muslim, etc. So he followed the car. The car eventually stopped at a petrol station. And the man, he got out, he went to do whatever he needed to do and he came back and he was about to drive off. And that is when this man, he went and he stopped him. And he started to become angry and frustrated. And he said to this person, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you be listening to music like this? You have such a long beard. You are a Muslim. You have your four windows down. You're blasting music. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you do this? This is not right. And he kept on advising him for at least four to five minutes. After four to five minutes, what happened was the person that was in the car that was blasting the music, he brought a piece of paper out and he brought a pen out and he started to write. What did he write? He wrote that, oh brother, I'm sorry, but what you are saying, I cannot hear you. I don't have the faculties to hear, nor do I have the faculties to speak. But I know that you are telling me something important. So please write down on this paper what you are telling me. I cannot hear you, nor can I speak. When the person read this, he became upset and he became ashamed of his actions. And he started to write that, oh brother, forgive me for coming to you in this way. But what I was trying to tell you is that you have music being blasted in your car and this is not right. So after the man read this, he wrote back to him saying, Jazakallah khair brother, may Allah reward you for advising me. However, because I cannot hear, I did not know there is music being blasted in the car. This car is my brother's. And I brought my brother's car out now for, because I need, I, I need something. This is why I brought my brother's car out. I did not know that music is being blasted here. May Allah forgive me and may Allah reward you. And then the other man, he left being ashamed and upset of what he has done or the way he approached the man. Now, my brothers and elders, let's pause here for a moment. Look at the condition of this man. Look at the condition of this man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he took away the power of hearing from that man. Took away the power of speaking from that man. Yet, what is he doing? Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah, we can see, we can hear. Yet where are the thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Secondly, my brothers and elders, from this story we learn, don't judge people straight away. Rather, for example, if you see someone sinning, before you start to call him bad names, go to him and see what his condition is. Maybe he doesn't know that that is a sin. Maybe he was not taught. Maybe he will take your advice. Why judge a person straight away? And this is what this man did. He thought that this person on purpose was listening to music. He thought that this person on purpose was doing all this, but eventually he was proven wrong. Secondly, my brothers and elders, there is a lot to say here, but we move on. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated in a hadith collected by Imam Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, a person who goes through difficulty in this world, goes through calamities, tensions, worries, even if it's a prick of thorn, you get pricked by a thorn. That calamity, that pain that you just received, because of that, Allah will forgive many of your sins. Allah will forgive many of your sins because of the difficulty, the sickness that you are going through. Jabir radiallahu anhu says, on the day of judgment, the people that had sicknesses in this world, and they had a lot of calamities and problems that, that they were going through, but they remained patient. Jabir radiallahu anhu, he said that, on the day of judgment, they are going to receive immense reward, mountains of reward to such an extent that people are going to look at that and they are going to say, I wish that in the world my skin was cut in pieces. I wish my limbs was cut in pieces. I wish I had gone through so much difficulty in the world so that I could have also re received this immense reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the condition is that Throughout your problems, your calamity, your sickness, you have to have patience. You cannot complain. You cannot question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, you have to remain firm and strong. Moving on to the next story. And that is the story that we already know and heard before of Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. 
Ayyub alayhi salam, he was a great prophet of Allah who had a lot of wealth. He had a large family. He had many children. But through, during his life, he was struck with a calamity due to which all his children passed away. Due to which his wealth had gone away. Due to which his house had gone away. Not only that, he suffered from a sickness which was so bad that the people expelled Ayyub alayhi salam. Told Ayyub to move away from the land and to live somewhere else. Ayyub alayhi salam, he moved away from the people. However, he remained firm like a mountain. One day his wife started to cry. And Ayyub alayhi salam asked, why are you crying? She says, I remember those days of the past when we were having a pleasant life, a good life, and we were enjoying ourselves. I am remembering those days and this is why I am crying. Ayyub alayhi salam told her, don't cry. Answer one question. How many years did we spend in living a good life? She said, around 60 to 70 years. He said, how long have I been ill and sick? She says, for around seven years. He goes, that Allah blessed me with 70 years of good life. And now he's only testing me for seven years. Let 70 years go. And then I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure me. When his wife heard this, she became patient and never did she ask Ayyub alayhi salam to ask Allah to cure him again. What happened was eventually his sickness became more intense. It became more serious that his skin started to peel off. That is how serious the sickness was. But what happened was one day two men were walking past and they looked at the condition of Ayyub alayhi salam and they said, maybe Ayyub has done something really bad. Maybe he's done a sin and because of that Allah is punishing him. When Ayyub alayhi salam heard those two men, he raised his eyes towards the sky and he made dua to Allah saying, Rabbi, anni massani yadurru wa anta arham rahimin Oh my Lord, I have been afflicted with a calamity and you are the best of those who show mercy. My brothers and elders, when Ayyub alayhi salam made this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he looked at the two weeping eyes of Ayyub alayhi salam, the two eyes that never looked at haram. He looked at the two hands of Ayyub alayhi salam, who was constantly making dua to Allah. He looked at the forehead of Ayyub alayhi salam that was constantly in sajda in front of Allah. He looked at the tongue of Ayyub alayhi salam that was constantly praising Allah and that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him and that is when Allah blessed him with more children Allah blessed him with a cure Allah blessed him with wealth and health and Allah gave everything back to Ayyub alayhi salam to such an extent that Allah certified in the Quran inna wajadnahu sabira ni'mal abd indeed we found Ayyub a patient person and what an excellent slave Ayyub alayhi Salam was. This is Allah certifying about Ayyub alayhi salam. We learn from here that we need to be thankful in times of difficulty as well as in times of happiness. We need to remain firm and strong, my brothers and elders, hoping reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Urwa bin Zubayr rahimahumullah, who was the son of a great Sahabi, he once developed a sickness, an illness on his leg, due to which the doctor said, We need to take your leg off. There is no way you will be cured except we need to take your leg off. So Bu'urwa bin Zubayr rahimahullah, he agreed. And they cut his leg and took the leg off. Urwa bin Zubayr rahimahullah, he looked at his leg and he said, Oh leg, I never walked towards haram with you. I never used you to walk to something that was haram. I never walked to any place that was going to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, I am thankful to Allah that he has took away one leg and I still have one leg remaining. This is how he thanked Allah. While he was saying this, people were coming to console him, to say nice words to him, kind words to him. He has seven children, seven sons. All of them were coming to console him and to sit around him. However, there was one son on his way to come into his father. He fell over, a horse stumped on him and he passed away there. People came and told him, that, oh, Urwa, your son has just passed away. Imagine this. He has just lost his leg. And now they have come to tell him the news of the death of his son. What did he say? He said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. All praises are for Allah under all condition. And then he started to say to people that, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he took away one leg 
and he has given me one more leg remaining. He gave me seven children, seven sons. He's only taken away one. I have six sons left. What is there to complain about? And that is how he showed thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and elders, always be thankful to Allah. If Allah has given you one sickness, thank him that he has not given you ten sicknesses. If you are suffering from a calamity, thank Allah that you are not suffering like other people who are going through so many calamities. If you are sick and at home, thank Allah that you are not lying down in the hospital beds. There's always something that you can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And quickly mentioning another story. Again, to make us realize the importance of these blessings. And again, I am paraphrasing what the scholar wrote in his book. There was once a sheikh. He decided that he is going to go to a hospital. And this is not an ordinary hospital. He decided to go to a hospital that, deal, that dealt with people with serious sicknesses. So he went and he told the doctor that can you give me some time and take me around the rooms of the hospital so I can look at the people who are suffering from illnesses and so that I can learn a lesson so that I can take benefit from them. So the doctors agreed. So they took the scholar to the first room. The scholar was told to look into the room. So he looked through the hole that is on the door and he saw a man whose hands and legs were constantly shaking nonstop. So the scholar asked, the doctor what is the problem with this man the doctor said this man he constantly shakes like this for at least two to three hours two to three hours this man his hands and feet are constantly shaking there is no way we can cure him when the scholar heard this he made a dua and this is a dua that every single one of us should make when we see someone going through calamity or that is going through difficulty Alhamdulillah alladhi aafani mimma abtalaka bihi wa faddalani ala kathiri mimman khalaqa tafdila All praises are for Allah, the one that has kept me safe from what he has afflicted you with and he has given me priority and honor over many of his creation. So the scholar is taken to a next room. He goes to the next room. He is told to look at the door and he looks through the hole of the door and he sees that all the four walls of the door, all the four walls of the room is painted in brown, the color brown. So he became shocked and he asked the doctor, why is all these four walls painted in brown and not white like the others? The doctor said, oh, Sheikh, this man you see inside, whenever he sees a wall, whenever he sees a wall, he becomes really angry and he begins to hit the wall. He has broken his head so many times. He has broken his fingers so many times. He has broken his legs so many times. And the only way we found a cure is when we paint the wall in brown, that is when he is relaxed and saved. Think about this. This is difficulty people are going through. This person, when he sees any other color, becomes angry and he starts to hit that thing. So they painted the entire wall brown so that this person could be safe. Again, the scholar, he made the dua and he moved on. Then he went to another room. He was told to look inside the room and the scholar, he says, I saw around 20 to 30 men. All of them were doing different things. One was giving the adhan, one was singing, one was running around, one was doing all sorts of things. And there were three men that were tied to a chair. Think about this. Three men tied to the chair. Now, this was shocking. So the scholar, he asked the doctor, what is this? The doctor said, you see these men, all of these 20, 30 men, they don't have any intellect. They don't know what they are doing. And that is why one is giving the adhan, one is singing, one is running, etc. As for the three men, you see, these men, if they are not tied to the chair, they will hit and they will attack whatever they see. They have broken so many doors. They have broken so many windows and they have nearly killed so many people. The only way we found a cure is when we tie them to the chair. And that is how they remain relaxed. Well, later on during the day, we let them loose so that they can go and walk around. However, when they are in the company of people, they attack people and they try to kill people. Again, these are human beings living like you and I. But Allah has not blessed them like he has blessed many of us. Then the scholar moves on and he goes to another room and he sees an old man with no clothes on. No clothes. However, he has many beautiful clothes next to him. So the scholar, he asks, what is this man doing here with no clothes? The doctor, he says, this man, we have given him so many different types of clothing. But every clothes that he puts on, he rips it to pieces. 
He doesn't want any clothes on himself. We have given him so many different types of clothing, but every time we give him clothes, he rips it into pieces. So the only way we found a cure is to give him no clothes. And that is how he remains patient. When the scholar, he heard this, he started to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said to the doctor, I've had enough. I do not want to see any more patients because I have realized the value of these blessings that Allah has given me and, and has not given these people. But just before the scholar was about to leave the hospital, the doctor said, oh, Sheikh, I want you to see one more room and then you can leave. So the scholar, he agreed and he went and he said, oh, Sheikh, look, look at this room. So he looks into the room and he sees many different people. He asks, what are these people? Who are these people? The doctors, they say, these people, they were millionaires. They were wealthy people. But Allah then took away their intellect and their children left them in the hospital. How many years have they been here? 10 to 15 years. These were wealthy people. These were engineers. These were doctors. These were scientists. These were millionaires, billionaires, respected people. But during their life, Allah took away their intellect. And due to this, their children left them in the hospital. But brothers and elders, what does this show us? That there are many people in this dunya that are suffering from so many different types of sicknesses, illnesses. Alhamdulillah, we need to be thankful to Allah for the many blessings that he has given us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to become the pious worshippers of Allah. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sayyidin muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد I end off my brothers and elders by reminding myself and everyone about the power of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Never forget that Allah is the most powerful Never forget that Allah can make the rich become poor and the poor become rich within a blink of an eye Allah has the power to do this Never forget this and never ever think that you can get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you commit a sin, think twice. Who are you disobeying? Don't look at how big the sin is or how small the sin is. Look at the one that you are sinning against, which is Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Recognize the favors of Allah before counting the problems Allah has given you. Before you always complain and before you always are questioning Allah, ask yourself how many blessings has Allah has given you? Count the blessings Allah has given you before you start complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't have wealth, thank Allah that you are a Muslim. If you don't have the ability to walk, thank Allah that you can speak. If you can speak but you cannot hear, thank Allah that Allah has given you intellect. There are so many blessings that Allah has given us that we need to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Live a life of humility. Don't have arrogance. Rather live a humble life worshipping Allah. Ask Allah for forgiveness because Allah is Al-Ghafoor, Al-Wadud. Allah is the most kind, the most merciful. No matter what sins we have done, ask Allah for forgiveness. And today, start from now. Ask Allah from the bottom of your heart that Allah forgives your sin and Allah forgives my sins and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us a purified heart. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to unite upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and upon the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa salli ala jami' al-anbiya wal mursaleen wa salli ala al-mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik wa tahawuli aafiyatik wa fujaati niqmatik wa jami' sakhatik wa salli صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Before we begin the prayer, important announcement that inshallah the building work of the masjid will begin from maybe tomorrow if not on Monday. And due to this, the side rooms will not be in use, and that is why from next Friday inshallah there will be two Jumu'ah prayers. The first khutbah, first Jumu'ah prayer khutbah will be at ten past twelve. 10 past 12, that will be the first Jumu'ah khutbah. And the second one will be at 1 o'clock. So please keep this in mind and make dua for the masjid. As you know, the masjid has a lot of need. So from next week, inshallah, make sure to attend one of these khutbahs 
First one is at 10 past 12, second one is at 1 o'clock and make dua that Allah makes it easy to complete the extension of the masjid and we all need your kind donations for the sake of Allah, the house of Allah. We are all together trying to build and complete the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So come forward and donate whatever you can for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be upon the sunnah of the messenger. May Allah Azza wa Jal allow this masjid to intercede for us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to become the beloved slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. Aqimis salah, ya rahamukumullah.